Google's new AI app builder just destroyed NATN. It is called Opal and it claims to build workflows with just natural language. And the best part, it is completely free to use, which would make using NATN a complete waste of time and money if you can build similar automations faster and cheaper by typing simple prompts in a beginner friendly interface. So as someone that spends hours every day building anything workflows, I'm going to put Opal to the test but trying to build for practical business workflows which if they work correctly can be sold to businesses for thousands of dollars each and if it actually can I will have to seriously consider switching some of my workflow building over to Opal. So make sure you stay till the end of the video where I reveal if it is worth switching over or not but before that let's actually test it all right so this is opal's website i will leave a link for it in the description below now opal is only available in the us but if you're from another country you could use a vpn and access it i may or may not leave a link for one in the description below so make sure you go and check it out but you did not hear this from me and now once you're able to access it let's see how it actually works so once you create your account this is going to be your interface these are some apps that i experimented with but over here in the gallery you can see some apps that the community built and you can access all of them you wanted to access the book recommendation app you, all you will have to do is simply come over here and click on it and this will open up opal's editor and as you can see this does really look like NA10, like there are some nodes over here, in this node you simply need to describe what book do you want, then over here this node generates the book recommendations, this node generates the summaries of the book, this one the explanations, this one gives you the purchase link, and then you can go over here in the final output and see all of these things over here. So how this app would work, if I zoom into it so you guys can take a better look at it, you would have to simply come over here in the preview tab and simply click on start. And over here you see that we need to explain the book characteristics that we're looking for. Let's say we're looking for a book that talks about the AI and we simply come over here and click on enter and you can see the app starts working and it basically does all of these functions that you can actually take a look at in the console over here so you can see exactly what it is doing. And guys, this does not seem to give me a result, and that's probably because a lot of people are actually using it right now, so it is actually lagging, I have been waiting over here for like 15 minutes, but I'm leaving this part in the video to see how your experience will actually be when you start using it, but, to be fair, this is a templated workflow, so it might be because of that, and if you create your own, you probably won't have this problem, so, just imagine that this actually gave you some book recommendations with all of these things, and let's actually go and build our own workflow, which is the actual important part of this video. So you simply have to come over here and click on create new, and this will open up a brand new project. Now you see, we have access to this editor over here, which basically allows us to describe what we want with simple text. So then Opal can go and create the workflow, but we can also create the workflow manually ourselves by adding in different nodes from over here. For example, if we wanted to add in a user input, we simply click on it and then over here we can specify what kind of input we want to get. Then after that, if we wanted to generate something, we simply can add it from over here and then all we have to do is to simply take this one and connect it over to this node, which is similar to N10 again. Then over here we can specify the user input we want and then finally we can come over here and add in an output which we can also move around let's say we want to bring it over here and we can also connect it so over here we basically can tell opal what output we want to get i deleted those because i want to try the text to automation builder to see if it actually is any good because that's the whole selling point of the app you can build different workflows by simply typing simple text so that's exactly what we're going to do right now all right so let's say for our first workflow we want to build a legal assistant app which we will simply give it a legal question and what this app will do is it will go look up the government websites that are related to a question go over there scrape all the information from inside them and then return us an accurate answer based on the latest laws so let's actually prompt opal to create a workflow like that so that is exactly what I explained over here. So now we'll simply come over here, click on enter. And boom, you can see that it just finished creating the workflow. And if we actually zoom into it, so we take a look at it, we, 
we will need to input two things, our legal question and our specific country, and then it will generate a query which basically tells it you're an expert legal assistant, basically combines our two inputs over here, then this node actually does the legal research, then this node actually formats a proper response with all these instructions that it just generated, and then this node is basically the output which says that it generates a static HTML web page that displays the answer to our question. So let's actually test it to see if this actually works. So to test it, all we have to do is to come over here in the preview tab. As you can see, we have our app over here. And now, we don't have a logo in front of it. If you did want to put a logo in front of it to make it like look better, you would simply have to come over here in the theme. Then over here, you can simply generate a random theme from here or even explain a theme that you might want. Let's say, for example, we want a low icon for our app since that is actually fitting. So all you have to do is come over here and click on generate. And as you can see, this would start generating our logo. And boom, it just generated. I wouldn't specifically say that this one is related to law, but we can work with it for now. So let's see if the app actually works. I will come over here and click on start. And over here, we need to enter a legal question. Let's say, for example, what is the black alcohol limit for driving, which is a very specific question. And then we click on next. And let's say we want to specify the country, I will type in Greece, since that is where I'm from. And guys, remember, never drink and drive. That's why I'm asking this question to remind you that. And then I will click on enter. And let's say it's right now conducting legal research. And if we move over here to the console, we can actually see the step that it's doing right now, which is, as you can see over here, conducting legal research. And we can see all the Gemini models that it's using right now. Now we found the answer, now it actually is generating the HTML output. So if we come back over to the preview tab, we can see that in Greece, the standard legal blood alcohol limit for most drivers is 0.05%. Which, if I open this website, guys, it basically tells me the exact same thing. So it did manage to give us the accurate information, which is pretty good. But if I'm gonna be honest, this is a super simple app. So let's try to build something more complex and that would apply more in a business setting, like a lead generation app, for example. So I will come back again over to Opal's dashboard and I will click on create new. And I will simply come over here and say, I want to build a lead generation app. I want you to ask me for the industry and the title of the person. And once I give you this information, you should then scrape Google search results and find leads that meet this criteria and return me their contact details like email, name, company name, etc. etc. So now we'll simply come over here and click on enter. And as you can see, Oppo is starting thinking about how it's going to build this app. And it just told us that it is unable to build it because it requires third party APIs. It says that it simply does not have access to. So we can see a limitation from it over here. But because I actually did test this before I make this video. What I found is that if I come over here and use these nodes, for example, if I come and add in a user input and I say, for example, the user should input the industry and title of the lead. And then I come over here, I bring this over to the left and I add in a generate node. And I come over here and say, search for people like that in Google search results. And I simply come over here and connect it to this node. Then I add in another node find the contact details of these people and again i return it over here and then i again connect it over here let me unzoom a little bit and i come in and add another generate node which what this will be is it will basically be fetch all the data and structure it correctly so it can be inputted in google sheets and again i take this and connect it and then I come over here and simply add in an output. Again, I need to connect it. And I need to come over here and simply select save to Google Sheets, for example. And if I come over here in advanced settings, I can actually name the Google Sheet it's going to create. So for example, let me say lead data. And now if I actually come over here and click on start, you can see that I can actually run this app, for example. The user should input the industry in the title of the lead. So let's say 
I want to search for doctors in the UK and I click on enter you can see that the app has started running and once it finished if I navigate over to the Google see that I just created you can see that it did give me some data and it gave me one email over here it's not actually the data that I really would want so even still like it gave me some information but it didn't give me the actual information that I would need in order for me to be able to reach out to these people. Even if you manually try to build it by adding in the different steps, while at the start it might seem like you can actually circumvent the limitations and can actually build a working workflow, it's not actually going to be useful because it's going to return you data like this, which is basically useless. So I would have to say, in this workflow, Opal totally failed to do what we needed it to do. But now let's build the third workflow, which is going to be a workflow testing the connectivity between Google Docs, Google Sheets and Google Drive. Because once I first heard of this, I thought of something like this, like me being able to input data inside a Google Drive that I found on the internet, for example, I copy and paste it. And then I simply create a workflow over here and I tell it, hey, format this data nicely and put it inside a Google Sheet, for example, and then download the Google Sheet and upload it into a Google Drive so I can have a saved copy of it. That's what, what I first thought of when I heard of Google's new tool. So I want to see if it is actually able to do something like that and basically connect between Google Docs, Google Sheets and Google Drive like it should be able to do because it's a Google app and they claim that it's built on Google Workspace connectivity. So I would simply come over here and describe what I wanted to do. So that is exactly what I explained over here and I'll simply come and click on enter and let's see will it be able to build something like that well it seems like it cannot because it says that it can only use google sheets google docs and in general google services only to basically output information and not take in information from those transform it and then output it so that's also a limitation of it and i'm actually very disappointed to find out because I did thought that it would be able to do something like that and if I'm gonna be honest it's sure it's like a Google app so it failed this workflow as well and now let's go over to the fourth and final workflow which is going to be a source generator workflow and I'm very optimistic about this because at least from what I've heard you are able to use VO3 completely for free with this method so you can basically create a workflow that allows you to input a prompt for a shorts video for example and then this will actually use VO3 completely for free and generate you the video so let's see if it is actually able to do that or we will run into issues so I will simply come over here and say create me a workflow that generates YouTube shorts the user should be able to input a description about the YouTube short he wants to generate and then the app should use VO3 in order for it to generate the final video and now I'll simply come over here and click on enter and let's see if it is actually gonna be able to do that because if it is that's actually a useful feature because you can basically use the most powerful text to video model completely for free which right now in order for you to use is actually pretty expensive so it just finished building the workflow so let's actually test it I will come over here in the preview tab and I'll click on start I will simply need to type in my description so let's say I want to generate a Bigfoot vlog since VO3 is famous for vlogs like this so let's see it's actually generating the video clip so all we have to do right now is simply wait till VO3 is done generating it hey guys I'm back and I actually sat there and waited for over 15 minutes now and it's still generating the video and the same exact thing happened yesterday when I was actually testing this app so I don't know if it's going to finish anytime soon or what but 15 minutes is way too big of a waiting time in order for this app to be worth using so if i'm gonna be honest i will say that opal failed on the fourth test as well so my honest opinion is that you shouldn't use opal at least right now maybe in the future 
Google significantly improves it and it's actually a good product but right now it's definitely not a product worth using and to be fair they do state that it is in experiment phase so you can't really expect much of it but I would still say that I did expect more from a trillion dollar company if I'm gonna be honest this is kind of embarrassing and I don't think they should have put that out there if I'm gonna be honest now again this is my personal opinion maybe some of you do find it useful but for the overwhelming majority of your workflows I would say you should stick to NA10 till now maybe if you watch in this area six months in the future maybe Opal is way better than NA10 and everyone uses it but at least for now definitely wouldn't advise you to switch over and I won't be either anytime soon I will keep using NA10 to build my workflows and then sell them which I actually show you how to do inside my community which is the top link in the description so you can go and check it out if you want but now YouTube thinks you're going to enjoy this video in which I actually tested another text to workflow app which is string.com and it actually performed way better than Oppo so make sure you go and check that out next and I will see you over there